There is no hiding all the damage that has been done by Hurricane Sandy, but there are mounting calls now to make the relief process a lot more transparent. And that leads us now to Assemblyman John Berzicelli, who joins us from the State House. Assemblyman, we welcome you back to the program. We heard from you during a hearing yesterday, uh, certainly discontent about the way these contracts have been awarded and in, I guess, to whom some of the contracts have been awarded. Well, Mike, first of all, it's good to be back. And uh, it's a topic that, uh, that, that's, that's very layered. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of progress made. A lot of people have received help. And as I said to the commissioner, in the end, uh, we will not be judged by the successes that occurred. We'll be judged by what hasn't happened and what failures are left. And as you get deeper into this, it gets tougher. So we raised a number of questions yesterday. And frankly, I don't know that we got a lot of answers. Uh, we may have gotten some, but uh, they're sort of obscure. We have to sort them out. But uh, the legislature has a great deal of uh, information that we'd like to have that we don't have uh, with regards to how some of the contracts have been let. And frankly, the people that have been selected, uh, they don't come to us with, uh, you know, with, with great scorecards. Yeah, I was and, going to say, uh, you, you made a remark about the, the track records of some of them. Uh, I get the sense you think that they should be precluded from the process? Well, you know, you would think on a surface in normal bidding rules in New Jersey at the municipal level, if a contractor had a, a bad issue, if a contractor was fined, uh, that contractor likely would be disqualified or could be disqualified. But the commissioner told us directly that they, in his words, had very few choices of who was available to do this kind of work. And frankly, as you think back on it, because we're 16, 17, 18 months into this now, or in that range, uh, I understand early on you have to make decisions. You've got to do that very, very quickly. But we're sort of long into this, and you almost think that we are, we're at a point where this is largely administrative, and this state oper apparatus between our Department of Transportation, Department of Health, uh, the DCA, we have a lot of experience of interfacing with the federal government. I don't know why we have to rely on other contractors, and we haven't been able to assemble this in a different way at this point in the program. You had questions about the state using what uh, is considered by many to be flawed federal data in terms of awarding some of these uh, relief projects and in trying to help some people. Who do you blame for that? Well, I, I think it's a combination of things. Uh, first of all, the Louisiana stuff was handled so badly that the bureaucracy that followed the money from Washington to New Jersey was different than it was in Louisiana. So you've got all these, all these steps designed to keep away from fraud and abuse because as much good as wants to be done, there's always a group out there that would try to abuse it. So in making rules and regulations so stringent, uh, uh, you know, you, you can't get to where you have to go. And you heard those who listened to the testimony yesterday heard that 80% uh, of the people that were deemed ineligible, uh, a number of them upon further review were deemed to be eligible. So that meant that they could have gotten relief sooner had the process been better at the beginning. There have been critics who claim that some of the awards were, uh, I guess the word discriminatory may be too strong, but not in the opinion of some, who claim that uh, Latinos and blacks were uh, rejected at a much higher percentage than white applicants for aid. Uh, Commissioner Constable has indicated that he feels offended by the notion that there would, would have been any discrimination. Uh, do you buy the numbers, first of all, and do you think if they do exist, why do they exist that way? Well, the numbers are the numbers, uh, and, and on the surface they tell one story. The commissioner was very clear uh, in, in his opinion, and I believed him to be sincere. Uh, he said he was offended that there was a suggestion that something was skewed. Uh, we have to take him at his word. Uh, but clearly the process early on uh, was causing uh, those groups of people to be deemed ineligible at a larger rate than others. Some of that stuff later found a balance. But again, everyone's not eligible. I mean, so in fairness to all parties here, since the legislature doesn't have all the information, uh, we're not in a position to pass judgment as to whether there was an intention to exclude people. The idea in the end is to get help to those who deserve it. And for those who do not qualify or are not eligible, they should not be bottling up the system. But uh, again, uh, you have to ask first to see if you're eligible. So you have to start somewhere. Yesterday, Chairman Chair said he had lost confidence in the state's ability to deliver uh, these funds and these programs efficiently. Have you also lost confidence? Uh, I, I, think, I think the chairman's very strong words reflected his frustration at the pace of the day and the lack of the information that flowed. Uh, I, don't know that, I don't know that I would say I've lost confidence, but I will tell you that I have a, a very great concern that uh, at the moment we are not moving uh, fast enough because, as I like to remind people, uh, our, our brothers, sisters, residents, neighbors that went through this suffered a hurricane. For those who are still out of their homes, for those whose businesses are eligible and have not gotten the relief that they, that they need for the municipalities that are struggling, they're still in a hurricane. Their issue is not resolved. 
And uh, for people who look and say uh, we have too much government and now suddenly want government to fix it instantly, you know, you have to realize that there are limitations. And maybe this conversation should not have been at the very beginning that everything's fixed and been more forthright to people and say, look, this is going to be a long road because this is a long road. Assemblyman, have to leave it there. We thank you for coming back on the program, sir. Thank you, Mike.